Well, good morning. We're continuing the series, Delighting in His Presence. And this morning, it's in His Presence series, Encountering God. So we're delighting in His presence from Psalm 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil or envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Those are the passages that we're looking at. And there are so many truths in that whole passage that we can't look at them all but we're going to concentrate on the one in verse 4 but just to remind us of those other truths that are there that we can look at for ourselves verse 2 know the fate of evildoers verse 3 trust in the lord and do good befriend faithfulness Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Verse 5, commit your way to him. And verse 7, rest in and wait patiently on the Lord. So many really encouraging expressions there. So many blessings that we can take away for ourselves. And if you've never read Psalm 37 before, I'd encourage you to sort of spend some time and look at those truths and those encouragements to us in our Christian lives and in our walk with God. But the one we're looking at is verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Many of these truths are tied in to that verse. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So often when we read that verse in the past, we actually skipped the second part because we want what we're going to get, the desires of our heart. But that's not the important part of this verse. What we're looking at is take delight in the Lord. But before we can do that, we need to understand what taking delight in the Lord is. And I understand the Hebrew word for delight is anag. And it commands us to find enjoyment in God. In God's presence. (coughs) To delight in something is to be greatly pleased with or extremely satisfied with. So that we find our greatest joy, our satisfaction, our pleasure, our happiness in spending time with him with God two phrases I found which I found really encouraging for me was taking delight in the Lord means that our hearts are truly find peace and fulfillment in him to delight in his love his care his protection his desire to have the kind of intimate personal relationship with us And we need to desire that relationship with God. In the children's slot, I talked about friends and how we can friends fall out. Even adult friends can disagree. But when we're united by God and by Jesus, those friendships are stronger. And delighting in God's presence needs us to have that very intimate relationship with God. And so I thought it'd be helpful if we look at friendship and how that enables us to draw close to God. So first of all, we need to get to know him. With our best friends, our special friends, we know them because we spend time with them. We care for them. We love them. We share experiences with them. We enjoy being with them. We have an emotional link. 
We can be emotional with them. We can cry with them. We can laugh with them through the good times and the bad. And that's what God wants us to have a relationship with him like. We need to be close to him. If someone asks us about our mom, our dad, our brother, our sister, we can talk for hours about their lives, their experiences, and what they mean to us. And that's because we have close relationships. And that's why we need to have a close relationship with him. Do we know him well enough? Do we have that kind of contact with God? Jeremiah 9.24 says this, Let the one who boasts, boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. So not only are we brought, drawn to delight in our time with God, God delights in our time with him as well. So the second thing we need to do is spend time with him. With our friends, family, we go out, we do social interest, we have hobbies we share, we go on holiday together, we do all kinds of activities. But if we're truly going to delight in God's presence, we need to spend time with him. And spending time with him can take several forms. It can be lots of things for different people. It can be praying, Bible study, worship, fellowship with brothers and sisters who know God well and being amazed by God's creation that we see all around of us. All of these things help us to draw closer to God and uh, being able to delight in him. We need to take an interest in him. We need to take an interest in the things that God does the things that God is interested in. This could be worship, it can be hospitality, caring for widows, widows and orphans as we're taught in scripture, those who are bereaved and hurting in loss. The Bible is full of things that God is interested in, in your lives and my life. We should be seeking out those that he is giving and guiding us to, to share things with, to care for, to pray for, and to be open to the guiding of his Holy Spirit so that we can delight in serving God. It's not about just our time delighting in his presence. It's our time delighting in serving God. The other way we can draw into his presence is to think about him. For many of us, our time is thought about our families, our children, our husbands, wives, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, if you've got them. How often do we think about God, apart from on a Sunday morning, or a prayer care group, or at a midweek group, or other things that we're involved in? God wants to be part of everything we do day by day. Colossians 3 2, I've, I found really challenging. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And so often when I'm at work, I'm focused on what I'm doing, and God is left out of it. And it's important that we take God with us and we have Him and we think about Him in all the things we do. Because he wants to be there. He wants to be part of what our lives are, hour by hour, day by day. And often when we're thinking about God, God has an amazing way of taking those thoughts and planting something in our heart. Because our hearts need to be changed, they need to be broken, they need to be remade by God. And so often we can think about something, we can be reading scripture and God will touch our hearts. And it may be that we suddenly get the Holy Spirit prompting us to ring someone, to drop round and call and see them. It can be as simple as that. 
and also we need to talk about him. Now, if I put a hand up, who finds it easy talking about Jesus? Not many. We all struggle with it, if we're honest. When I started doing Little Fishes, uh, Liz stepped down, Celia and I took over leading Little Fishes, and we both had a passion that we were going to talk about God on a Monday morning. And we'd pray about it every Monday morning, that God would give us an opportunity to have a conversation. And this was really on my heart. And the first, one of the very early, well, probably not the first, one of the early Sunday mor Monday mornings, someone said to me, why are you doing this? Because I was the only man at that time. Now Ian's been, Malcolm comes, John leads worship, uh, leads the children's songs with his guitar. And I flunked it. I have to say to you, I just said, oh, well, you know, it's one of those things I, I think I ought to do. Now I'm sort of semi-retired and I've got Monday mornings free. And, and for the next week, God kept saying to me, what, what did you say on Monday? What did you pray about? And so I actually found myself praying more that he would give me the opportunity again and somebody else would say to me, why are you here? And that very morning, someone, I sat down next door to a grandma and she said, why are you here? And I had to sort of stop and think for a second or two. And I said, because God told me to be here. And that just led into an incredible conversation with her. It actually led that grandma, whose husband died during lockdown, to go on the bereavement course with Ian and Jan. And she came in a couple of weeks later and she gave me a newspaper clipping. And she said, do you recognise any faces on this? And this was a photograph of little fishes, although it wasn't called little fishes in those days, of nearly 40 years ago. And Jane, Jane's saying, that was, I was here. Jill's saying, I was here. You know. And it, I said, what happened? She said, oh, I was clearing out some stuff. Now my husband's gone. I need to get on top of things. And she said, I found this photograph. And you think, that is faithful service. It had impacted her then, and it was still impacting her now. So we need to talk about him. We need to know about him. And we need to be willing to share what God has done in our lives. Because Romans 10 challenges us in verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone speaking to them about him? You know, people need us to share our faith. They need us to share what God has done in our individual lives. Because that will have more impact on them. Because it's personal and it's um, accessible to them. The next thing we have to do is get our priorities right. I have to admit, for me, there have been times in my life since I became a Christian where my priorities have been wrong. Work took over for a long time. Our hobbies, our activities can take over our lives. They can stop us spending time with God. They can detract us from reading our Bible, from reading daily notes, from praying even. And so often, one thing we do will spur us onto something else. I've got an app on my phone, Takata Bible comes up with a daily devotion. So often when I read that, I end up having to then go into that passage and read more. And I wouldn't do that without that little prompt. And sometimes when I get to work, where I work in Leamington, some people get in at half seven some days, so... I can get in if they're there. Other days, nobody turns up to half, no, half eight, quarter to nine, and I find myself in the car and I read my devotion. 
that daily devotion, it just prompts me to not waste that time sat in the car. I can be actually trying to get my priorities right for the day. But the most important thing is, we need to look forward to spending time with him. That's the most important thing. That can be church on a Sunday morning, like now. It can be in a home group. It can be having social fellowship with others. It can be sharing generously what God has given us. It can be a walk and appreciate in his creation. It may be the quiet time we have with him. When we pray, not just telling him what we want or what we'd like or what we'd expect, but actually putting ourselves in his hands to listen to what he has to say to us. And sometimes, we've, we've talked about this in our home group, we've been looking at what it means to come to church. And several of us have expressed that on those days when we're probably not feeling that spiritual, we're probably not feeling that physically well or mentally well, and we have to force ourselves to come to church on a Sunday morning. Those are the times when God reaches out and God touches us with his Holy Spirit. And we can go away refreshed and healed and blessed. So when we think about spending time with him, in his presence, we can do it with anticipation, we can do it with joy, we can do it with happiness, or do we view it as a chore, like ascending church, or feeling an obligation to read our Bible, just so that we can say to somebody, well, I read John 16, 54, 28, 95, you know. It's because we should be doing it because we want to do it. We want to come into God's presence. And as we delight in being with God, it's an awesome thought that he delights in being with us. Because he wants us there with him. And it affects our thinking, our actions, our hearts can be moved often to tears. And worship. And that can affect, that can sort of really challenge us sometimes. And you all know I go fishing, and sometimes I'm really blessed because I have the whole pond to myself. And I sit there fishing, and I am singing at the top of my voice. You know? And sometimes, if, if I'm doing that and somebody else comes later, I feel quite aggrieved that I can't carry on singing quite so loudly. But also, it's those times when we're hurting, we can turn to God and we can go into his presence. We, I, I, I look after this water out at Snitterfield called Snitterfield Reservoir, and there's a big dam at the end, being a reservoir, obviously. And I can't tell you... <coughs> The times when Anne Kennedy was diagnosed with cancer. I stood on that dam and I screamed and shouted at God. And it was amazing how often the wind would turn, and it's a, it's a feature of this water, the wind will turn 180 degrees. And one minute I'm standing on the dam and it's flat calm in front of me. And I'm screaming and shouting at God and telling him how upset I am and everything else. And the wind would turn 180 degrees and just blow me so hard. And it was like God saying, I'm taking it all away. And in the midst of that strong wind, I would feel peace. Often on a Sunday, we, Jill and I go up there and we walk around. And you can stand on the dam and you look over whatever, which direction it is. And we can probably see for 10, 15, 20 miles on a clear day. And we both just stand there marvelling at God's creation. It's our Who? Thin space. Sorry? It's our thin space. <laughs> 
And it's just, you just stand there thinking, how many shades of green has God created? You know, we can see God in the simple things. We can actually spend time in his presence. And it's not always about talking or listening. It's actually just acknowledging him in what he does. But we can't look at verse 4 without thinking of the second part of it. He gives us the desires of our hearts. This isn't the meaning that he gives us what we want. A new car, a bigger house, a better job, more money. Those aren't the desires of our heart that God wants to hear. Spending time with him, delighting in his presence, he will put the desires of our hearts in place because they want to be the desires of God's heart. And that's when we know that we've spent time with God. When he changes our thinking, he changes the desires we have. And so that's where we come. And I just want to leave you with a promise that God gives us. And Oh, sorry, before that. This is the reservoir. I forgot to put these in. Because so often, what we see prompts me to pray. And like many of us, I get really excited by sunsets. You know, you flick through my phone, there's loads of photographs of sunsets. The clouds are just amazing. And these images make me think about God and make me want to pray. But the one I love the most is when I see a sky like this. And the reason is because that puts on my mind that God is coming, Jesus is coming back. And when I see a sky like that, I imagine that's what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back, but millions of times brighter and better. And out of all those things, we get a promise from God that says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Because he doesn't hold us at arm's length. He wants to embrace us. He wants to love us. He wants to care for us and guide us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you draw us into your presence. Lord, it's a mind-blowing thought that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, he now sits on the right hand of the Father and intercedes for us. And Lord, because of all of that, we can come to your throne of grace. We can come into your presence. And Lord, I just pray that you will allow each of us to experience that coming into your presence afresh in the coming days and weeks. And Lord, may we truly delight in being in your presence, Lord. Knowing that we can share the things that hurt us, the things that we worry about, the things that we struggle with. Whether it may be mental health, physical health, family relationships, whatever, Lord. You are open to hear the cries of our hearts. But Lord, you also want to speak to us. By being in your presence, you want to change our hearts. You want to break them. You want to remould them. You want to make the desires of our hearts your desires, Lord, not ours. And so, Father, I just pray that will be true for all of us, day by day, as we draw closer to you. And have your love pouring out among our brothers and sisters here, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.